Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I welcome you to the 24 Tags of Christmas 2015. I started this last year, and I'm calling it a tradition since I'm doing it two years in a row. And today I'm going to be sharing with you the first one in the series. It's going to be some watercolored snow. You're going to want to make sure you check the blog post at the end of this video and down in the description down below because there is a giveaway involved. So for the watercolor snow, I'm going to use some Prima products and some Hero Arts products. And the Prima product is going to be these water soluble oil pastels. And I think these are really going to be fun. This is my first project with them and I went for something easy because oil pastels scare me. So I was looking for something simple. And techniques honestly don't get any simpler than what I'm about to do. This works better with red rubber stamps than it does with clear, although it will work with clear for sure. I just scribble color. Your kids can even help you scribble color and get this project done for your holiday cards or tags. Using a pink, a purple, and a couple of blues. These are very creamy, very moist kind of pastels. They're not chalky and they go on really easily. I'm not pressing very hard. It's just sketching lightly over the top of the surface. And I just wanna make sure I cover everything on the surface of the entire stamp. And you can use any colors. You could make this match your wrapping paper. How pretty would that be if you found some wrapping paper that had maybe some kind of snowflake and then matched it with a background like this? That'd be very cool. So I've got it all covered up. And I'm gonna show you two different ways. I'm using a mini mister first because that's gonna put out a lighter spray, a really soft spray. And if you use a softer spray, you're going to end up with a more crisp look. And in each one of the videos during this series, I'm gonna show you some variations, things like how to use more or less water in something like this in order to get a different varied look because I want you to be able to have your options open to you when you're crafting tags for this holiday season. I'm gonna press this down using a piece of scratch paper because I am so not about getting my fingers all dirty and covered in the paint. So lift these puppies up and see what they look like. And of course I was looking at it off screen and going, ooh. So there you go, there's your view of it. And check out the other one. And I'm getting two done at a time. How much of a bonus is that? And those are fairly crisp because I use lighter water coverage. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit because you've seen how to do this once and I'm going to put the colors back over it again. I haven't cleaned it off, I've just kind of let it go as it was and I'm going to use my big sprayer this time. I'm going to link you to all these stuff, uh, supplies and stuff in the description down below but use the big sprayer to add more water. And you don't want it to be swimming in water but this is just going to give it a heavier coating and you'll see the difference that it makes with these oil pastels. And you take the Take them off of there and look at how soft and squishy and watery they look. So that's just a different look from the earlier ones and I think they're both very valid and interesting and beautiful. I wanted to make some additional tags that I'm going to stamp my sentiment on and this time I decided to use just one color because I wanted it to be simpler since I'm going to stamp a sentiment over top of it. So I used just the light blue and gave it a, a relatively good misting of water. And I have my sentiment circles that are already cut out of the watercolor cardstock so that it's all ready to go. So I can do all four at once. How's that for getting a lot of things done all at one time? I'm gonna pop all those on there, press it down really good, smoosh it around. And then I'm gonna have all of these circles that I can put my stamped sentiment onto. And while this is still not set, like before it totally sets in, you can spritz them a little bit. I tried spritzing them and they, they didn't work perfectly. They didn't move a whole lot, but they moved a little bit enough to soften. And I wanted a stamp on them, so I just kind of quickly stuck them down onto a piece of scratch paper so that I could then do my stamping and not have them moving all over the place. And I'm stamping in this new purple ink. I'm so excited that Tim finally came out with a really good, good, good purple. This is like my favorite of his different purples because a lot of the other ones were a little too red or a little too vintage and that sort of thing. Love, 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 love this one. So yay for Tim. Thank you, thank you for making our life easy. But since it's on this lighter blue background, this purple ink shows up really great. And then before I touched anything, I wanted to make sure I just dried them. I wanted all that distress ink and the water I'd spritzed and everything to be good and dry on these before I attached them onto the tags. 
super simple. Next, I wanted to round two corners of them. So I rounded the top corners using my corner chomper from We Are Memory Keepers. You can use any kind of corner rounder for that kind of a thing. And I like rounding just part of a tag because I think it adds a lot of interest to it. And I haven't showed this little tip in a long time. I'm pretty sure everybody knows about it, but to make a banner at the bottom, you just cut up the center a little snip and then make the two corners meet. And it makes a perfect little banner every single time. So I'll just snip all of them that way so they're all ready to roll. And um, one of the things that I love about making multiple tags <laughs> is that I only have to think once about making something like this. For, for me, the cards are the things I want to invest my time in. The tags just get torn off the gift. And even though they're beautiful when you put them on, I like to make them go pretty quickly. So next I punched all my holes in the tops of my tags so they're all ready to go and to put some twine through. I took a little piece of dimensional adhesive from The Precious, which is what I call this giant roll of 3M adhesive, and I put a little brad through the tops of each one of the little round tags and I put the dimensional adhesive underneath the bottom just so it it both stays in place so that circle doesn't spin around but it also gives it a little bit of dimension and it makes for a very nice simple tag and I can tie my twine right around that little piece of brad, that little metal. So how fun was that? I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button. Make sure you subscribe so you'll get all of the other videos in the 24 Tag series. And as the videos go live, the playlist that's shown here is going to have more videos in it. And the playlist down below is last year's playlist. If you want to watch through that and get some more tag ideas that I gave you last year, you can do that as well. Head on over to the blog, link in the description so you can get some information on the giveaway. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.